at 6.12 p.m. today, Donald Trump announced he is now in full panic mode, expecting to be indicted by the Manhattan District Attorney at any moment. Donald Trump did not put it in exactly those words, but because Donald Trump is the most purely reactionary and unintentionally transparent politician we have ever seen, we know exactly what motivated his 6.12 p.m. press release titled, Statement from the Trump Campaign on the Manhattan DA's Witch Hunt. Imagine how much more difficult and complex and suspenseful it would be to cover Donald Trump if he were careful and deliberative and calm and knew how to mask what he's thinking and what he's worried about, like every president who served before he did. But Donald Trump's uncontrollable temper and his unrelenting stupidity make him almost fully transparent. Donald Trump's panicked press release tonight begins with the words, President Donald J. Trump is completely innocent. He did nothing wrong. Like almost all Trump statements, the accurate way to read them is simply the opposite of what the words say. So one perfectly reasonable translation of that first line of the Trump press release tonight is, Donald Trump knows that he is completely guilty and that he did everything wrong. Tonight's press release from Donald Trump is an attack on the prosecutor who Donald Trump clearly now expects to be the first prosecutor in American history to charge a former president with a crime. Trump says the latest witch hunt is being brought on by George Soros-backed, radical left, Democrat prosecutor Alvin Bragg. The press release is an indication that Donald Trump's criminal defense lawyers in Manhattan and Donald Trump have reason to believe that Alvin Bragg could indict Donald Trump as early as tomorrow. If Donald Trump believes that is possible, then of course he is going to issue a ranting press release aimed at Alvin Bragg at 6.12 p.m. this evening. On what could be indictment eve tonight, there's more to know about the man who might enter history tomorrow as the first prosecutor to ever bring charges against a former president. Growing up in Harlem, I was repeatedly stopped and frisked by the NYPD, including three times at gunpoint. I've seen loved ones arrested and have opened our home to support a close family member post-incarceration. Alvin Bragg wrote that during his successful campaign for Manhattan District Attorney in 2020. Manhattan has never had a district attorney like Alvin Bragg. Manhattan has never had a district attorney who'd been repeatedly stopped and frisked by the New York Police Department three times at gunpoint. Alvin Bragg's predecessor was the son of President Jimmy Carter's Secretary of State, Cyrus Vance. And District Attorney Vance's predecessor, Robert Morgenthau, was the son of President Franklin Roosevelt's Secretary of the Treasury. District Attorney Morgenthau held the office for 34 years in Manhattan. There have been only 37 Manhattan district attorneys in the 222-year history of that office, and most of them have been New York aristocrats. Then came Alvin Bragg. Alvin Bragg grew up in Harlem on a block known as Strivers Row, a neighborhood that was home to black professionals like Alvin Bragg's parents, Sadie and Alvin Bragg Sr., who grew up in the small town of Petersburg, Virginia, where they met in the eighth grade. Sadie was valedictorian in her high school graduating class. She went to Virginia State University, while Alvin Sr. went to Syracuse University. They married in Alvin's senior year of college and deliberately decided to move to Harlem and decided to stay there when they easily could have moved to the suburbs because they wanted Alvin Bragg Jr. to grow up in that nurturing Harlem community of Strivers Row. 
Alvin Bragg Sr. worked at the Urban League while his wife, Sadie, became a dean at Manhattan Community College. Alvin Bragg was a good student who went on to Harvard College, where he became president of the Harvard Black Students Association. During his graduation week in 1995, Harvard's daily newspaper, the Harvard Crimson, published a profile of Alvin Bragg titled, The Anointed One. In her profile of Alvin Bragg, Anna Wilde said that he is, quote, a smooth and convincing talker. And, quote, there is a definite sense of the anointed about him. She saw Alvin Bragg as someone who could have, quote, a role on the larger stage of local and national politics. That profile, written 28 years ago by a college student, is correct so far. Alvin Bragg has assumed a role in local politics and because of the Trump investigation, national politics, and possibly as early as tomorrow, Alvin Bragg could assume a role in American history. After that profile appeared in his college newspaper, Alvin Bragg, having graduated from Harvard College cum laude, went on to Harvard Law School, where he was an editor of the Harvard Civil Rights Civil Liberties Law Review. Alvin Bragg still lives in Harlem. He and his wife have been married 22 years and have two children. Life as they have known it will change, change utterly, if Alvin Bragg brings criminal charges against Donald Trump. Alvin Bragg and his family will be attacked and savaged by Donald Trump on a daily, possibly hourly basis, more viciously than we have ever seen Donald Trump lash out at anyone. Donald Trump will lie about Alvin Bragg. And Alvin Bragg knows this. But there has never been a Manhattan district attorney better able to face the volley of Trump attacks than Alvin Bragg. This is a tale of two New Yorkers, one who grew up the spoiled rich child of parents who never taught him how to tell the truth or do the right thing, and another kid who grew up on Strivers Row with the best possible family and community influences to shape his experience of the real world effects of law enforcement a kid who strived for excellence in the classroom and was taught a scholarly and moral respect for the truth. To put two characters like this in the same courtroom together would be the work of a great screenwriter if it were, if it were not happening right before our eyes in this dramatic time. If Alvin Bragg and Donald Trump find themselves in the same courtroom on a criminal case, they will each be in that room because of the choices each of them made about what to strive for in this life. And with them in that courtroom will be the unseen tracks that their parents laid for them to follow into the lives that they have chosen. Donald Trump's very first encounter with the law came in 1973 when he and his father were accused by the Justice Department of violating the civil rights of people trying to rent apartments in New York. Donald Trump entered an agreement with the Justice Department to end his racist practices as a landlord. But of course, Donald Trump's racism lived on. And Donald Trump will now be hurling his racism directly at Alvin Bragg who Donald Trump has already called a racist because Alvin Bragg is black and is investigating Donald Trump. The Trump racist principle appears to be that black people should not be allowed to investigate Donald Trump. That's why Donald Trump has hurled his racist invective at Alvin Bragg and at District Attorney Fawny Willis in Atlanta, Georgia, who is also very close to possibly indicting Donald Trump. We've seen Donald Trump attack a judge in the Trump University fraud case that he lost because Donald Trump believed that the judge's Spanish last name made it impossible for that judge to be fair. 
The Trump rule is the only people allowed to be judges in Trump cases or investigators of Donald Trump are white Republicans who love Donald Trump. But tonight, Donald Trump is on the verge of indictment in Manhattan by a district attorney who was born the same year that Donald Trump was first accused of racist practices by the Justice Department. By next week, the world could be watching a courtroom drama like we have never seen before. The anointed one seems like too exalted a label to take seriously in the real world. But when the history of this period is written, it might fit Alvin Bragg as well as it seemed to fit him when he was on his way from Harvard College to Harvard Law School.